uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, and let me congratulate my uh, honourable friend uh, for Lanark and Hamilton East in securing this debate. I, I do wish that we had more time today to, to, to discuss this matter, uh, and I want to pay tribute to my, my, my uh, good friend, uh, honourable friend uh, from uh, Air Carrick and Cumnock too, who uh, made a fine contribution uh, as well. And uh, it will come as no surprise to you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, that I will be supporting uh, both my colleagues and uh, what they have done. And I want to pay tribute to uh, my honourable friend for Lana <coughs> Hamilton East for the petition which called for the UK Government to introduce at least three days uh, paid miscarriage leave for parents who lose a baby before 24 weeks of pregnancy for receiving over 40,000 signatures. So that does su suggest, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, that there is uh, support for it. Uh, within the wider public. And on the 21st of June last year, my honourable friend for Larrant and Hamilton East presented a, presented a private member's bill to change the law, which is due for its second reading uh, tomorrow. And she's also secured a uh, Westminster Hall debate on this issue on the 8th of March. Uh, and there's been two early day motions, um, miscarriage leave and employment policy and miscarriage leave in Northern Ireland, which have been supported by uh, honourable members uh, across the House. Uh, other colleagues, um, there was mention made of my, uh, my honourable friend for North Ayrshire and Arran, who has uh, led on the bereavement leave and pay bill in 2018, which came into effect in 2019, which secured two weeks paid leave for all parents who lost a child up to the age of 18. Uh, and I, my honourable friend for North Ayrshire and Arran has uh, launched that 10 minute rule bill to make provision about leave and pay for employees where a close family member has died and is scheduled for second reading. So my colleagues uh, have a strong record on this, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, and I'm proud to be associated with them and they have my full support. Now, miscarriage is the most common kind of pregnancy loss, affecting around one in four pregnancies. The loss of a baby at any stage of pregnancy is an unimaginable tragedy, and our sympathies are with families who have suffered at baby loss. Um, the, in the UK, the definition uh, for that applies to pregnancies up to 23 weeks and six days, and any loss from 24 weeks is called a stillbirth. The baby is born alive even before 24 weeks and lives, and lives uh, even for a matter of minutes. That is considered a live birth and a neonatal death. So I'm calling on the Minister, um, there is no statutory entitlement to leave for anyone who loses a baby before 24 weeks. And I'm asking the Minister if he will uh, consider this matter. Um, he knows that I have often pursued him uh, regularly and rigorously in many debates covering his brief where I ask him about the much and long-awaited employment bill, which we've waited at least four years for, Mr Deputy Speaker, which covers a whole host of issues, as he will be aware, uh, not just around the Taylor review, um, but we're still waiting on this piece of uh, legislation that can help so many uh, workers. There are, there, there are too many workers who are left without support, I find, due to cracks in the current system, which leaves paid provision of leave at the discretion of employers and can result in discrimination against parents in low-paid and part-time work. And that's why I, I certainly feel it was vital for, for, for the Minister to consider uh, the call that my colleagues have made uh, today around paid miscarriage uh, leave. Um, I hope that he will, he, he will um, um, consider this matter uh, most uh, carefully. Now, I just want to say, Mr Deputy Speaker, um, I, and this was touched on by my old friend from Air Carrick and Cumnock, is that the SNP Scottish Government is committed to um, matching uh, the uh, the uh, laws and, and what's been introduced in New Zealand uh, and introducing three days uh, of paid miscarriage leave within the public sector in Scotland. I think that that will be welcome. However, um, as has been said, to introduce paid miscarriage leave in the private sector does require legislation in this place. And I think that there is support across the House to ensure that that is the case. Um, the Scottish Government are, com are committed to establishing a dignified and compassionate miscarriage service by the end of 2023, including ensuring maternity units have dedicated facilities for women who are experiencing unexpected pregnancy com uh, complications. As part of delivering this commitment, a scoping exercise will be issued shortly across all 14 health boards 
and will help establish current service provision for miscarriage care and support that is available to women who experience unexpected pregnancy complications. In addition to that, Mr Deputy Speaker, the Scottish Government will listening to the voices of those providing miscarriage services, women who have experienced miscarriage and those organisations who support them through a series of roundtable discussions. So I would hope that uh, the Minister has listened very carefully to what our colleagues have said. I'm sure that we'll have support uh, from our uh, Labour colleagues for this, and I hope that he will uh, look positively at, the, uh, at what we think is uh, a sensible measure in introducing a policy of paid miscarriage leave across these islands.